Greetings. Uh, okay, so I just finished recording a uh, video about how to clean out bad responses in a survey in a Qualtrics data set. Um, I promised that I would do a follow-up video to show you a couple more things. So um, this is that follow-up video. Now, um, the if you haven't watched the first video, I do recommend that you do. But if you feel like you're not going to use that part, I do recommend that you load Tidyverse and load Janitor. Um, make sure you have installed and loaded them um, because we did that in the previous video. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is um, figure out how many uh, people didn't respond to a lot of the questions. And you know, when you have people doing a study in Qualtrics, they might get mad or bored and decide to X out or their um, internet might crash or there are a lot of reasons that somebody might not be able to finish a survey. And so you do end up with a lot of rows that have substantially incomplete data. And you wanna get rid of those rows before you start analyzing the data. And um, so what I like to do is look at the names and see, you know, basically where a lot of my questions start. And let's say so, you know, I, if we look at like 102 here, this is a, a post, an outcome variable, a dependent variable. It's kind of midway through the post test. And so, you know, I figure, all right, if people are dropping off here, you know, we'll, we'll catch them for sure. And then if we go down to like say 135, this is where I ask them to put their age. So let's just see, you know, so that's um, column, you know, here I'm looking at column, you know, 102 to 135. It doesn't have to be those, uh, you could choose any, but I just wanna show you those are the ones that I chose. And so what I wanna do is my data set is called capital DAT. So I'm gonna say DAT dollar sign count N A. Um, I made up count N A. That's the name of the column that it's going to create. You don't have to call it count N A. You can call it whatever you want, but that's what I named it. It's going to count the number of missing values. And in R, a missing value is represented with capital N, capital A. So it's going to count those for me. And I get that count. So it's going to create a column called count N A, and it's going to put it in my data set, capital D A T. So I'm going to do DAT dollar sign count NA equal row sums is the function. So R-O-W capital S-U-M-S, -S, row sums. And then left parentheses is I-S dot N-A. And that's going to sum all of the rows that are N-A. Now is N-A again left paren. So row sums left paren is dot na left paren and then the name of your data set. So I named this data set capital DAT. So dat and then left bracket comma and now I'm going to list all of the rows that I want it to count. So anytime in R you're listing you do C parentheses. That's what we did up here in the previous video. We created a list of bad uh, response ID names. Here I'm going to create a list of columns. And so C parentheses, the first column is 102. It doesn't have to be 102. I chose 102 because that was the first item in my one of my dependent variable scales. But my post test actually starts with the manipulation checks um, on 52. So I could have made this 52. I just chose 102. Um, and I'm going down to 135, which is near the end of my survey, where I get the age. And so I'm just going to count how many are missing between 102 and 135. And this column mean, or this uh, colon, I'm sorry. So I have C parentheses 102 colon 135 close parentheses. And that colon means everything in between the two numbers. So it'll go from column 102 to column 135. And then I close the parentheses with the right parentheses, close the bracket with a right bracket, close the other parentheses um, from the from right before the dat with another right paren, and then close out the is na parentheses with a right paren. So it's dat dollar sign 
count NA equals rho sums left paren is NA left paren dat left bracket comma C left paren 102 colon 135 right paren right bracket right paren right paren. That line will create a variable that counts up all of the missing cases between column 102 and column 135. Now I'm going to get a table to show me how many missing values there are. And I'm going to use TABYL, which is the table from Janitor. You could also use TABLE, which is the base table. But we'll do table, left paren, dat, dollar sign, count NA, right paren. And if, so I run that, and it says there are 1,186 people who have zero missing responses from column 102 to 135. So that's uh, almost 89% of the respondents com basically completed the entire survey. There are 20, uh, there, I'm sorry, there's one person who has 28 missing. So that probably means they got started on the posts on the dependent variables and then stopped or clicked out or they timed out, something happened. There are two people who left 31 blank and there are 147 people who left, uh, I'm, yeah, who left 34 blank. And 34 is probably is the, you know, all of the columns that I counted. So there are 147 people who basically didn't do the post test at all. And then there are three more people who basically didn't do the post test. Um, so um, that's about 11% of respondents, you know, that, that I need to get rid of because they basically didn't complete the survey. And to get rid of them, it's uh, quite simple. I just, so here I'm going to do DAT1, which is creating a new data set called DAT1 equals DAT. You don't have to do that. You can just do DAT equals DAT, but that'll write over your old data. So if you do something wrong or you have a typo, it'll write over your data set and you'll have to start over. So I like to always create a new data set by giving the data set a new name on the left-hand side of the equal sign. So dat1 equals dat, and I'm capitalizing the D. And then I have a pipe again, because again, we're gonna use the filter command. So pipe, and then um, underneath that, filter, left paren, count NA. So filter is the name of the command in dplyr, which is the package we're using. Count NA is the name of the variable that I created. So if you didn't name the variable count NA, then type whatever you named it. And I'm going to say is less than five. Five, you know, doesn't, nobody has five or six or seven missing values here. It's either zero or 28 or 31 or 34. But obviously 28, 31, and 34 are less than five, so this will be fine. I could just do count NA equal equal zero, but I'm doing count NA less than five, so there you go. So count NA less than five, right paren. So we run that, and it creates a, a new version of our data set that doesn't have the 150 people that didn't finish the post test. So now, if we look at the table for that count NA in our new dat1 data file, we'll see the only, the only value that people have is zero, meaning they didn't miss any of those questions, and that it's 1,186 people. Um, and if we do n row left paren dat1 right paren, so this command right here, that will give us the number of rows in the data set, which is again, 1186. So now we've got rid of people who are substantially missing values. Um, I'll show you real quick also how to look at the, well, you know what? I'm gonna do another short video that shows you how to look at how much time people spent and how to filter your data based on how much time people spent as well. Um, but for this one, I'll stop here just so that I don't have too many videos that are too long. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you found this useful.